Oh, hello, YouTube. <laughs> Sometimes I have drinking problems, but today on The Naughty Librarian, I am bringing you an enormous book haul. Recently, I went to Y'all West, which is a book festival primarily with like YA books. And you might be thinking, hey Amanda, why didn't you vlog there? Well, let me tell you. One, um, it was like a weird day in general. And two, uh, like, I don't know, the whole festival was very much diminished from how it's been in like previous years and then this year there was just so many fewer books there was fewer books there was just fewer everything it was just a lot smaller than it had been in many other years so there was less to do and less to film and also <laughs> in the beginning of the day I fell down some stairs and sprained the shit out of my ankle so for most of the day I really just cause kind of sitting on my little book cart in the shade <laughs> just staring at everyone else doing stuff and sending my boyfriend to stand in lines to get the books I wanted. He was a champion and a trooper and he stood in all of those lines and didn't complain once and I just sat there with like the shittiest ice pack on my ankle from the the first aid booth they had. I mean it was technically an ice pack but really it was just like a sack of cool water like it never got icy. <laughs> but yeah I just kind of sat there and like Charlie Brown music playing over the background, just like da 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 da, just sad. <laughs> so um, I really had nothing to vlog besides me sitting there and uh, not doing anything. However, like I mentioned, my boyfriend was a trooper, didn't complain at all, got me all the books I wanted, plus extra books, because like, I don't know what it is about my boyfriend. He's just very charming, I think, to people, and people just take pity on him like he's lost, and obviously his girlfriend sent him to do things, and he doesn't know what they are, but they just like, okay, you can have this. Like, I think people just like, are just super nice to him. <laughs> so that was Y'all West, and then the week before Y'all West was Los Angeles Times Festival, books I did vlog that there's a vlog up on my channel and I got more books at that festival like the amount of books I have the haul right now I think there's like 18 <laughs> there's a lot of books let's get into it let's go let's we'll start this first little or stack and this is the stack from Los Angeles Times Festival books I'm doing it first because chronologically it came first so starting things off I have I kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. And I really, really like Casey McQuiston as an author. I've read their other books. Uh, they're both were adult romances. This one is a contemporary YA romance. I think it's a romance. I'm not sure if like romance is the main part of the story, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a contemporary YA story. So I'm like, ooh, how that's gonna work out? There's not gonna be as spicy, I'm assuming. Ooh, pretty. Okay, so I just opened the book and like, look how pretty these end pages are, right? They're so pretty. And then like, look at the, the naked book. It's got kisses on it. Look at all the kisses. <laughs> like, I'm very impressed with like the art design on this. So that's like a cool, fun, extra detail. So this one we're following Chloe, right? And she is a, a young teen and she's very driven to become valedictorian of this like little Christian school she's in, in Alabama. And the only problem with that is the titular Shara Wheeler, the, the, you know, like the golden child of this school. And uh, one day Shara kisses Chloe and then disappears. And what follows is like an elaborate like uh, treasure hunt kind of with like clues and stuff where Shara had left little notes for different people that she kissed right before she disappeared. So she kissed Chloe, she kissed her boyfriend and she kissed this other person. And they all kind of have to team up to try to find Shara. So it's kind of giving me like a little bit of like Paper Towns by John Green vibes, but like queer, <laughs> which I'm into. I liked both the other books by Casey McQuiston, so I have high hopes of also liking this one. I also got The Gilded Ones and its sequel, Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. This one I got because I hadn't bought this book yet, so like the whole day I was looking for this book at the festival because the author was supposed to be there and I was like I need to get this and I couldn't find it and then I finally found it at the end of the day and when I bought it they're like oh cool if you buy this one you get the arc of it for free and I was like shut the front door <laughs> so I got the first and the second book as a bonus I was killing it so in this world right uh we're following this girl her name is Dika and um th when she turns 16 there's like this blood rite where she has to they test her blood and she's hoping it runs red like everybody else is she's gonna be normal she's gonna live a normal life it doesn't uh-oh runs gold means it's like it's an impurity and like I guess 
they're gonna banish her or something i don't know and then this lady shows up she's like hey listen guess what you could go ahead and get banished and be sad or you can come with me because like the emperor like he's putting together an army of all kinds of girls like you with the gold blood it's like cool it gives you superpowers like you should come hang out and she's like done and so she has to go and like train to become like a warrior and then like everything's not really as it seems and there's probably like conflict and drama and secrets <laughs> But yeah, I'm super into it. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. And I have the first book and the second book I got for free. So yes, I was killing it that day. The book, the book luckiness was on my side. I got a copy of Blade Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. I kind of won this. And the thing is, uh, this is the sequel to Realm Breaker. And I don't have that book, nor have I read it. <laughs> but I have the sequel. I kind of just won it. But you know, there's, there's that. I don't really know what it's about. I know vaguely, like, um, you know, there's like a group of misfits, I think from all different type, different groups and stuff, and they all have to kind of come together to save the world from an evil queen, is what I have gathered about the series. And you know, like Victoria Aveyard, she wrote the Red Queen series, and I was very up and down with it. There's four books. I liked book one quite a bit. Book two was not good. Book three, in freaking incredible. Book four, meh. So like I was really up and down with that series. Loved one and three, didn't really like two and four. So who knows, maybe maybe this is a cool series too. I'm not like opposed to reading it. I just haven't, I don't own Realm Breaker <laughs> and I don't really have a plan on buying it next, like really soon, but I have the second book. I got the arc of it, so there's that. So I, maybe it's like pushing it up my TBR a little bit. Kind of like an impulse buy, I got A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. And mainly just because I happened to meet the author, so I bought the book. It seems kind of cool, though. It has, like, alchemists and sharpshooters and stuff and magic, and I was, like, into it. So you have Margaret, right? Uh, she sees this mythological little creature, and every year, I guess, or however, whenever someone spots one, they go on this hunt, and if you catch it, like, you get, like, magic stuff. And she's a sharpshooter, already kind of into her. And then she's like, oh, shit, we have to enter the hunt in pairs of two. I need to find myself an alchemist. Enter Weston. He is um, not the luckiest alchemist when it comes to finding an apprenticeship. He can't get one anywhere. He wants to be an alchemist. He's maybe not that good at it. I don't know. But uh, he shows up at, at Margaret's house. I guess her dad's an alchemist. And he's like, hey, can, can your dad teach me things, please? And she's like, okay, but you have to go on the hunt with me. And he's like, okay, fine. And then, you know, I'm assuming they fall in love for real. I don't know exactly, but like I'm way into it. There's magic, there's alchemy, there's sharpshooting. It's kind of like has a cool vibe that I was into and I happened to meet the author. So I just impulse buy, I don't know, I got it. Okay, so this next enormous stack right here is all from Y'all West. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> We're gonna get into it, let's go. So I'm gonna start off with uh, All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman, mainly because I didn't necessarily get it from the festival, but I ran into my friend at the festival and she was like, hey, I have an extra arc of this, do you want it? And I said, yes, please, and now I have it. So it was just like an accidental find. <laughs> okay, so in this world, right, um, the there's a blood moon and when it goes up, it means, uh oh, time for competition so these seven like magical families they all send someone to compete in this uh game basically it but the winner gets access to this wellspring of high magic and uh so they all go to compete and it's not like a fun game where you compete and you know nothing happens it's like no you compete and then you die it's a comp competition to the death a fight to the death for this magic right and then something happens where this isn't really a secret anymore and now like the whole like world has found out about it and now it's become like a spectacle like people are betting on it people are have like favorites to win now it's become like a thing like a, like vegas i don't know it's like a whole thing about it but yeah it's like um these characters aren't necessarily going to be great people. I'm sure some of them don't want to kill people. So maybe some of them are like, I like killing people. Let's do this. I shouldn't say that. I feel like that'll be a meme. <laughs> anyway, I got this one. It does seem super cool. So thank you to my friend Reggie who gave me a copy of it. 
like I got this whole big stack of books in a bag um, they just gave you all five at one time if you went to the event and I sent my boyfriend to it and he stood out in the sun for a long time and he got me all the books in the bag. The main one I was super, super interested in was The Witchery by S. Isabel. It seems kind of cool. I love witchy books and it's like fully witch coven story. So it takes place on this in this little town that happens to be a hell mouth and it's in Florida because of course it is and there's the they just coven of witches and they're like students at the school I guess and like they are from different backgrounds there's like a death witch a green witch and then like I don't know a super powerful one that maybe it's going down maybe choosing making bad choices choosing the wrong things might go down a dark path I don't know and then like um the haunting season is coming and basically like wolves come out and like eat people it's like a problem so like people like will make sacrifices to the witches for protection and stuff and like the humans and witches they have to fight against these wolves together and it's like a whole thing and I'm like I think it's super cool it's definitely witchy it's got witchies and wolves I don't know if they're werewolves or not we'll find out but like I'm super into it I love a good witchy book love it i also got a girl's guide to love and magic by debbie rigod and this one i didn't really know a lot about or i haven't even heard of before the festival but it actually sounds really really cool this one is kind of based in like haitian culture so we're following this girl cecily right and she is like so excited for this like big like uh caribbean pride parade thing and she gets to go to the like the big like festival with her cool aunt who's like an influencer and also maybe dabbles in a bit of voodoo and that's like I believe the correct pronunciation of voodoo and uh, she kind of accidentally gets herself possessed so Cecily is like oh shit I need to get this this mischievous spirit out of my aunt because it's not supposed to be there so she has to enlist her best friend and also maybe her crush and they have to do like a scavenger hunt for all of these little magical doodads in order to per do this ritual to depossess her aunt. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm really into it. I love witchy books. I've said this many times and this one seems kind of fun. It's like a scavenger hunt. Also possessions that are in it. I don't know. I think it's going to be a good time. I also got a copy of You, Me, and Our Heartstrings by Melissa C. And this one's kind of interesting. So you have Daisy and Noah, and they're both musicians. Daisy is a violinist, Noah is a cellist, and they're both trying to audition for Juilliard. They get there, right? And they're like, hey, you two play a duet. And they're like, okay. And then they do, and it goes viral. It is like crazy how in sync they are, even though they are two very different people. And um, it goes viral, but maybe not for the best reasons. It kind of goes viral because everyone's painting a love story on top of this, which may or may not actually exist. <laughs> Daisy has cerebral palsy and everyone's kind of painting this love story as if like, oh, she's overcome her disability. And then, and then Noah's a saint because he sees past it, which is kind of bullshit. So, um, you know, it's like a lot of fame all at once for a very young person. So they're dealing with a lot and also I think falling in love and music and all this kind of stuff. So it might be really good. It ha definitely has like disability representation which I think is really good. And you know, it might be really sweet actually. I mean, the cover looks so sweet. <laughs> so I think definitely for younger audiences, this might be like really, really good. I'll give it a whirl, see if I get into it or not, but I I'm glad that it exists. I also got a copy of Meet Me in Mumbai by Sabina Khan. And this one is really kind of an interesting idea here. It's like a mother and a daughter, but both of their stories are told when they're like teens. I think they're both like 18. So uh, the mother is 18 and this is in the past and uh, she, she falls in love with this boy and the boy gets called back home to India and she's in America. Oopsie daisy, she's pregnant. 18 years later, you have this girl named Mira and she loves her adoptive parents, but then she finds this box of like letters that her birth mother wrote her. And one of them is like, hey, if you ever find this and you forgive me for doing what I had to do, come to Mumbai and meet me. And so she's like, you know, I'm gonna go to Mumbai and meet this lady. So it's kind of an interesting story with two different perspectives of people who are the same age and dealing with like difficult life choices. So I think that's really kind of an interesting story to tell. I, I'm into this. I think this is like really kind of a cool concept. 
I also got a copy of The Feeling of Falling in Love by Mason Deaver. And this one is just, oh my goodness, just disaster humans. <laughs> So it starts off with Neil and Josh, right? They're childhood friends, current um, hookup buddies, and they are going to Josh's brother's wedding, right? And uh, Josh is the one who says it. He says, hey, Neil, I'm in love with you. And Neil goes, oh no, and then all hell breaks loose. Uh, I don't think Neil probably feels the same way and he needs to find a date to this wedding because obviously Josh is still going to the wedding, but he can't go with Josh anymore. So uh, he enlists Wyatt, his roommate, and his roommate thinks he's being a dick. But then like, you know, they get to know each other a bit more throughout this like experience and like maybe they fall in love. I don't know. But if they do, hey, guess what? All shit's gonna break loose again. So <laughs> I think this is maybe like a messy book with messy people. But uh, I, I, who knows? I don't know. I don't like have like a ton of like want to read this right now. But like, I, I appreciate the concept. It is a person in, in a literal dumpster fire on the cover. So I mean, there's they're saying a lot. <laughs> I also got Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus. And I liked One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. That was like several years ago. I also got it at Y'all West. Ha ha ha. But then I got this other one. I don't think it's a sequel at all. It's like a completely other story, but it's definitely a murder mystery. We're following this girl named Bryn, right? And five years ago, her favorite teacher at her school was found murdered in the woods behind the school. And the case was never solved about who did it. And cut to today, Bryn is starting an internship working at a true crime podcast. And this is like the best thing. Bryn's like, yes, I'm going to find all the clues. I am going to solve the mystery of what happened to my teacher. In so doing, she has to find the three students that found the body, because that's where the story needs to start. And one of these people is Trip, her ex-best friend. Now, Trip told the police something and basically exonerated the other two people involved. And through, through doing that, uh, their lives have been well. Um, but the thing is, everything Trip told the police is a lie. What were the lies? What's going on here? Who's getting away with murder? I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, I'm super into it. I love a good twisty turny murder mystery and this one sounds really cool. I like Kara McManus murder mysteries. I think it's gonna be a fun time to read it. I also got this copy of Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen and this one is giving me like kind of like Cruel Prince vibes and I'm into it. So we're following Violet, right? She is a prophet and also a liar. Uh, the, I guess the royal family has her doing prophecies and she gives them but she kind of just makes them up for the most part. So uh, at the end of the summer, Prince Cyrus is going to be coming into power. He's gonna start his reign. And he's just like, listen, girl, like we both know you're full of shit. You're out on your ass. And she's like, the hell I will, I gotta fix this. And then uh, she has to make a prophecy about Cyrus's love life. Whoopsie daisy, she accidentally sets off a curse that will either doom or save the kingdom depending on who Cyrus like gets with in the end. So he's got a lot on his shoulders now. <laughs> but Violet has a choice here. She has an opportunity to like seize control of her destiny no matter the costs. Or she could kind of see like, hey, like Cyrus and I have some sexual tension. Let's, let's explore that. So there's two options ahead of her here. Regardless of that, it's a very devious kind of cutthroat royal court. Lots of lies, deceptions. I don't even know if there's violence or not. I'm assuming because there's thorns and stuff on the cover. But like, this sounds cool. Like, I'm into it. I don't read a ton of YA, but like sometimes I get a YA and I'm like, damn, that's like good. So this seems really fun and kind of dark and like morally gray. And I'm into that. I got this copy of We Deserve Monuments by Jazz Hammonds. And this one's kind of a cool arc because it's actually just a bound manuscript. Like it doesn't have a back cover, it's just white paper. And you know, especially with like, you know, supply chains how they are, I'm assuming that's why they're printed like this. They just couldn't get the full books done. So we got bound manuscripts, look at that. I kind of got this book just accidentally because the booth actually has had extra copies and they gave me one. <laughs> so I didn't really like go for this one, but like it kind of has a cool concept. It has like generational trauma in it, like Southern Gothic kind of stuff. I'm into it. So we're following Avery, right? And her mom takes her out of DC. 
takes her to small town Georgia. We're going to take care of your terminally ill grandmother. And she's like, okay, I've never met this lady. Um, I've never really explored the entire black side of my family. This is going to be crazy, but okay. So she goes and she, she's pretty sure her life is ruined. But uh, she does meet this cool girl next door, Simone. And like, they're vibing. There's like a thing there. However, there's a lot of secrets in a small town that could, you know, shake the town to its foundations. I don't know. There's gonna, like, there's generational trauma here. There's secrets, small town, southern gothic kind of vibe here. So it does sound really kind of cool as an accidental get, but I'm not, I'm not unhappy that I have it. <laughs> so this last stack I save for last because these are all my most anticipated books that I happen to get arcs of and I'm very excited about. First things first, I have this copy of The Sunbearer Trials by Aiden Thomas. Super into it. I have liked both of Aiden Thomas's other books and this one is like the first like fantasy fantasy, like a fantasy world. The other ones were fantasies but they were like in the real world. This is a completely new world. Also bound manuscript and it's funny because when I opened it, like the, the formatting is so weird. I think they literally printed a Scrivener document. Like they didn't even reformat it. <laughs> it's just a Scrivener doc. So that's like an interesting thing. <laughs> so the basic idea here is that there's all these like demigods, right? And every 10 years they have to compete in the Sunbearer Trials. Basically um, one of them, whoever wins it gets to like go around and like spread the light of soul around the world, like sun god, you know, and then um, it helps like defeat evil obsidian gods, blah, blah, blah. And then the loser of the trials also has an important thing to fill where they basically get sacrificed the soul to help protect the world. So there's a whole thing here. In particular, we're following Teo, who is a trans demigod who wants to get through these trials as unscathed as possible. And there's like twists and turns and it's a completely fantasy world. I'm excited to see what Aiden Thomas does with a complete fantasy world because I've only read ones that like happened in the real world. So I'm excited for this. I also got this Unbound Manuscript of We All Fall Down by Rose Sabo. And like, look at this cover. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's intensely pretty. And it's kind of really cool. It has these four different like queer people and they all kind of get pulled into each other's orbit through a mysterious death. And essentially it's this like kind of crumbling city and there used to be witches and stuff, but they're kind of on the outs and little do they know these four people have been pulled together in a game they don't even know they're playing where basically they have to... So something's gonna happen and it's basically dealing with like how magic works in the world. And I'm super into it. It sounds dark and gritty. It's a duology, loving that so far. And I was reading the blurb on it and there's this really cool line in it I just wanna share. We All Fall Down examines the complex network of pain created by power differentials, even between people who love each other, and how it is possible to be queer and turn out just fine. And I'm like, yeah, you tell that story. I love it. So I'm very excited I got this one. I think it's gonna be super cool. I also got a copy of Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. So into this. Uh, Melissa Albert writes kind of like dark fairy tales, and in particular, a lot of her female heroines are just bundles of rage just like not necessarily like likable heroines but that's why I do like them because they're kind of like dark and gritty and this one is again more generational trauma there might maybe there's like a theme here but um we're following the mother when she was a teenager got into some witchy shit started some shit uh-oh problems cut to now we're dealing with Ivy right Ivy's Dana's daughter um also kind of getting pulled into witchy stuff but the things the mom did in the past are very much still active and affecting what's going on right now in the present. So it's like magic mom and daughter in similar situations, fighting together against evil magic stuff. Super into it, love it. I think it's gonna be dark and gritty and I'm way excited to read this. Last up, I got a copy of The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. Oh my goodness, such an anticipated read for me. And also this cover, uh, it's gorgeous, I love it. So Susan Dennard wrote the Witchland series, and this is completely different, different world, different series, nothing, they don't intersect. So in particular, following this girl, Winnie, right? Um, she's going to save her family's good name by taking these trials to become one of the luminaries. Basically, there's this town, Hemlock Falls, 
and um, it's a weird little town and you, like cell phones don't work there. It's a weird town and the forest around it full of monsters and like the luminaries are the people who stand between the world and the monsters. And she's like, I'm gonna be a luminary, gonna save my family's good name, killing it. This is what I'm gonna do with my life. So she goes and she's like, okay, here's the trials. I'm gonna find my friend. We're gonna work on it together. Uh-oh, we've uncovered deadly secrets about the forest and maybe some monsters can't be defeated. Maybe some nightmares aren't only in the dark. Maybe they're in the light too. Ooh, spooky. So it's gonna be spooky ooky and I'm super into it. <laughs> And yeah, I think it's gonna be really good. I just, I love like the, the spooky witchy vibes of it. Ooh, okay. So I feel like I just talked for like a really long time, but I had so many books I got. I think this is my biggest book haul in like a really long time. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below, uh, which of the books in this video are you most excited about? Or is there something on uh, coming down the line that I haven't mentioned that you're really excited about? What's a new release you're excited about? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And also, if you want exclusive content, you can subscribe to my Patreon. The link is in the description down below. And I will see you guys soon. Bye!